Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a playthrough of a very early prototype of the solo mode in Bloodstones by Martin Wallace, which is currently on crowdfunding. And again, this is a very early look. Uh, Stephen Hearn, the designer of the solo mode, has been kind enough to let me uh, walk through these things, but all of the scenarios are still in development, so everything you see could and possibly will change. But I just wanted people who are interested in the game to see how the solo mode might work. It's very much focused on scenario play and not as much on like giving you an Atoma just to play the regular competitive game. And as always, no disclaimer for our crowdfunding coverage. I'm not getting paid for this or anything. I just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos, top 10 lists and such every month. We also have a separate streaming channel with even more content. We also have a weekly podcast and a Discord if you'd like to come and talk to us. So first to go over the basics of Bloodstones. Uh, this is an area control sort of map battling game with four different armies. Um, in the current scenario I'm playing, which is uh, the second one as things are currently laying out, this is uh, in the scenarios for the Horse Lords. The solo campaign is going to have scenarios for each of the four factions to kind of give you different things to play around with. And you build out units on the map, you move around, you try to lay down villages for victory points, take over enemy villages and possibly conquer the citadel, the main structure, kind of the capital of your force. And you get victory points for doing this, you get victory points for controlling villages, and whenever you've shuffled through your bag three times, you stop getting as many victory points, and once everybody's done that, the game ends. Now all the action in Bloodstone is controlled by these tiles here. Each one has an image in the middle, which shows which unit it represents, has a value on the left, which shows its recruitment cost. Basically, you'll have a hand of these tiles, and to recruit one, you need to discard that many other tiles. So like if I wanted to build this castle with a recruit cost of two, I could discard this shield tile and the siege engine tile to pay for it. And finally, the number of icons on the right from two to five represent how many movement points you can get for your units already on the board by discarding this tile, and it can also be used in battles to boost your values and give you a better chance of winning. Players take turns one at a time. On your turn, you can discard one tile to capture villages where your units are. Then you can mix and match main actions however you want, building units, discarding tiles to move them, and then resolving battles where you share a space with enemy units. Then you can discard a tile to build villages in empty spaces. And finally, you draw back up to your hand size, usually of six, although the horse swords I'm controlling have a hand size of seven. And if you get into combat, everything's resolved with these battle ties, which also show those same symbols you saw for the movement. Each player draws three or four tiles, uh, four if they have the most units in the battle, but they're going to use only the three highest. You can additionally discard one tile from your hand to sub in its value for the combat to help you win. And you can pair the total sum of the three highest tiles you use plus bonuses for your units in the battle, although sometimes those bonuses only apply if that unit's attacking, or if that unit is defending, or if they're in a specific terrain type. The side with the higher sum forces the side with the lower sum to discard one unit and then retreat the rest of their units to an adjacent space. And those are sort of the core basics of the competitive game. There is more going on. We won't go into all of it right now. In the solo game, at least what I've played, which again is just a limited taste of how it could look, in some scenarios you have sort of out of play factions. Like in this one, the red tiles on the right are the dragon riders, and they're just basically blocking me and the uh, hill folk, this other faction, the green faction, from going over there at all. It's just out of play. And then for the hill folk, you've got a ton of stuff already laid out. Now, in some of the scenarios, the enemies attack you. They draw random tiles from their bag, and that determines, like, which army advances towards you and have to defend against that. In this one, I'm showing I am the aggressive force. I have to take out all of the uh, hill folk's castles. They've got five of them here, and also their citadel before I've gone through my third shuffle, before, like, the game would normally end in competitive play. But they're going to be drawing tokens every turn and putting them in spaces with villages that are empty. And they have this whole sheet that shows like the numbering of the spaces because the AI cares about that sometimes. But it's basically reading order, like uh, the lower numbers go from left to right, advancing to higher numbers, and then from top to bottom. So uh, in this scenario, they're going to be putting units in these empty villages here first, then jumping over here, and you know, just kind of doing that sort of thing. Additionally, whenever I destroy a castle or the citadel, they're going to get free units on one of their other castles or citadels, the nearest one. And if they get the chance to retreat, they'll try to retreat into other castles or citadels. So uh, as I destroy more of these things, they're going to kind of shore up their defenses better. 
All right, so that's the overview. Let's get into play. It begins with my turn. And for setup, I'm going to draw nine tiles. I can place up to five build points worth of units here in my citadel space. And then I'm going to draw up to a hand of seven, my uh, starting hand size, and start going. All right, so here's my starting draw. And remember, I can build up to five build points worth of units, which again is this value on the left. Castles in this scenario are basically useless because they will never attack me. They will always just wait for me. Siege engines are amazing because they are plus two to my combat value when attacking. They don't help at all in defense, but there won't be any defense. Swords are also very good because they're always plus one to combat regardless of terrain or whether you're attacking or defending. Cavalry are plus one only in plain terrain, which is where most of the castles are, so they're helpful. Cavalry costs a little bit more, even though they only have a bonus to combat in plains terrain, because in the full game, they give a defending player with at least as many cavalry as the attacking player the option to retreat before the battle happens. Uh, but they're really not as important in this scenario, since, again, they're not attacking me. Skirmishers only help in forest terrain. I think there's only a single castle with forest terrain, so that's not great even though they're free, so I still might get them. And then boats are interesting. My citadel, my starting spot is down here, and uh, to get to the castles, I can start hoofing it over terrain. You can walk over like little rivers like this. But alternatively, if I put some ships here and destroy their ship in this space, then ships basically become free stepping stones of movement that you don't have to pay for. So I could, for example, move through the ship to here to attack that castle. And then after that one falls, I could move through the ship to here to attack that castle and save tons of movement overall. Although I might not want to focus too much on just the castles because first of all, I have to destroy 10 villages as well to win the scenario. And then also the uh, hill tribes have these two giants up at the top. Normally in the uh, competitive game, giants will give the controlling player four tiles to draw every time they're in a fight. Even if that player doesn't have the most units, which is normally what you need, the majority of units to uh, have four tiles. But in this battle, these two giants, as long as they survive, will give the green player four tiles in every battle they fight. So I might want to like rush past pass the castles, defeat these guys to make their combat strength not as strong, and then head back south. But either way, I like the idea of going for that ocean bridge, so I think I'm going to spend two of my five free build points to get two ships. Uh, then the siege engine, of course, is the strongest one, and uh, two swords. I think that's my best little start of five units worth. And these four guys will stay in my hand, and then I'll get three more tiles in a second. All right, so here we go to start. We'll get to that battle once I take my first turn. Uh, each of the ships gives plus one, and I'll outnumber their ships. I'll also draw four tiles, although they will as well because of the giants. So I have a pretty decent shot of winning that battle unless I draw horribly. All right, looking at my seven tile hand, I drew a new unit type, the leader. Most factions only have one of these, but the horse lords have two. They cost two, but they are ridiculous because first of all, they're plus one to every combat in their space. But also when they move, they can take one friendly unit with them. And moving into different terrain costs different amounts, but like even moving into hills, which usually cost three for each unit, uh, the leader can take one for free. So it makes it incredibly more efficient for me to move my armies around. All right, but going into my turn, first I can capture villages, but I'm not on any enemy villages yet. So we're going to go right into main actions, building, moving units, and battling. So first things first, let's uh, deal with the most important thing. Let's go in and resolve this ship battle. So uh, each ship is plus one combat, so I've got plus two to my total. He's got plus one. I have more units than him, so I'm going to draw four tiles. They have giants. They're going to draw four tiles as well. And for my draw, pretty terrible. These have a low end value of two and a highest value of five. So I've really drawn almost the worst I could have here. In fact, yeah, since there's only two of each value, two through five, uh, literally the only thing I could have done to make this worse is uh, draw on a three instead of a four here. So yeah, I think I have to, before I see the defender's tiles, I'm going to discard this five tile. So it will be out of my hand. I can't use it to uh, build units or move this turn. But that subs in for one of my three tiles. So now my uh, three best tiles for the combat are going to be three, four, five, much better than I had. And don't forget, I have a plus two bonus for my ships. Let's see what the AI gets. Oh, there's a five. Um, there's a four. Come on, come on. There's a three. So, wow, this could not have gotten closer. They'll get rid of their two, which means we both have the exact same tiles. Three, four, five versus three, four, five. But I had two ships with plus two. They had one ship with plus one. So I win the combat. Which means first the loser has to destroy one of their units, in this case the ship, and then if they had any other units they could retreat, that's not going to matter here. Alright, so great, I have secured, at the cost of uh, my, the best tile in my hand, uh, I have secured a sea route to speed up travel to there and there, or wherever else I want to go. 
Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think these little, like, islands here are supposed to mark where the ocean ends and, like, the river begins, which makes me think I can only go to this space and this space and this space, but, like, can't teleport uh, through my ship straight to there, maybe? That's what I'm guessing it means. All right, so what else do I want to do? I think I'm going to build my leader because, again, they're going to give me uh, such nice uh, extra movement every turn. So they have a cost of two. I'm going to discard the castle because I really don't need it. And one of these very expensive cavalry. Or actually not a cavalry since they have three movement spaces. Um, and actually not the castle either because I'd rather use that for movement. I'll discard my two lowest movement values, which is cavalry and skirmisher. Because I'm not really planning to summon either of them, at least now. That brings my leader into play. And now to move this entire army across the ocean into the space with his first castle, which is a uh, basic plains land type. It only costs one movement. That'd be one movement for the leader, bringing one person for free to three movement would get my entire little army of four people in there where I assume I might win the combat. We'll see. All right, so three movement. Let's go ahead and discard this cavalry unit to do that. That's going to get everybody in here. I don't have to resolve the battle right away. I can do other actions, but uh, I want to know what's going to happen. And I can't move these units as long as they're in a space with an enemy unit. Castles counting as units, villages not. So if it was just a village here, I could move away. Now, castles have plus three combat value. Uh, siege ends have plus two when attacking. And swords and leaders all have plus one. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five. Versus three, I have a two-point bonus. And again, because I outnumber them, I'm drawing four tiles. And they are because of the giant special power. Now, let's hope my draw is a bit better this time, although it's not... Okay, that's good. Oh, my gosh, these twos. All right. So right now I'm at uh, five, three, two. And again, I'm going to have a two-point advantage over them, so kind of like I drew a 12. Although, okay, to be safe, I'm going to use the castle. Really don't want to lose my good units and waste time here. So now I think it's almost impossible for me to lose. I've got a five, a four, and a three again. And again, two more units than they have, or two more combo points, I should say. Okay, they got a five, they got a three, they got a two, they got a four. So five, four, three again. And let's see, what would have happened if I had not subbed in my tile? I would have had five, eight, 10, plus my two advantage over them, 12, and they would have five, eight, 12. Okay, we would have tied. In the case of a tie, you just redraw again and have like a whole new combat basically, unless the defender has a shield unit, which means they win on ties. Although in that case, if you used a tile, it's still discarded. But here with the castle, I did win outright. Which means they have to lose one unit and they have to choose the castle because it's going to go away anyway since it can't retreat. But if they had any other units here, they would run away with them. But then whenever a castle is destroyed, I have to draw one unit from their bag and put it in the nearest castle or citadel, preferring a reading order if there is a tie. So they're going to put a unit in here, uh, which will then, if I kill that castle, retreat somewhere else. So yeah, it's not great. Although actually it is great, I take it back because they drew a Reaver, which is a plus one combat when attacking, but no bonus at all when defending. So except for making it a little bit tougher for me to get uh, the majority of units here to get the four tile bonus, that guy's not helping them at all. All right, my turn continues. I have one tile left, although I can choose to stop with the tiles I have at any time. The village is not destroyed yet. That's the beginning of my turn where I can destroy villages. But villages don't impede my movement, so I could move some of my units up with that last tile. And the thing is, I have to destroy 10 villages, and you can destroy multiple villages at a go. You basically discard one tile from your hand and then destroy as many villages as the value discarded. So I want to uh, use my remaining movement to get to at least like one or two more of these villages. So let's see, I've got four from the sword guy. We'll discard him. And for one movement, we'll do one, uh, two to move that guy. And then three, I guess. And then I suppose four and work up toward the giants and maybe kill them. I've left my leader behind, but once these sword guys move up, he'll be able to use his ability to move them with him. And yeah, I think I'm going to destroy these villages and then go try to take out the giants and remove that big advantage they have in tile draw. All right, I am out of tiles, so I'm going to stop my main actions. Now I can build villages, but unfortunately I'd have to have a tile to discard, building up to as many villages as the icons on the right, although I think it costs uh, extra to build in hill terrain. But how building villages works is you can do them in plains, forests, or hills where you uh, either have a chain of villages and your citadel that connect back to it, or a chain of units, but they can only go in empty spaces. So until I destroy these uh, enemy villages next turn, I can't put down my own villages. Now, why do I care about putting down my own villages? Usually it's worth victory points, but in this scenario, it only matters because I can build new units on any of my structures. So currently I'd have to build new units all the way back on my stronghold and then just transport them all the way up. But I've got some villages like up in here or wherever I can bring in reinforcements much more easily. 
All right, that's the end of my turn. I'll draw back up to seven tiles, and let's see. Uh, I got some castles to give me extra movement. Got a whole bunch of cavalry I don't care about, a skirmish I don't really want. But my other leader, the question will be, do I bring them in now, really far back, or wait until I build some villages and then uh, summon them the following turn? That's probably what I'll end up doing. All right, for the enemy, their turn is super simple. I just draw a tile out of their deck. I keep on drawing until I get a unit. And then it goes in the first unoccupied village, uh, empty village space in reading order. So we ignore the two villages with the giants and they uh, spawn right here. This is a shield unit. They are plus one combat value when they are defending. And they also let the defender win ties. So they're kind of nasty. Although I don't really expect to have to go up to those villages. I think I can get my 10 by doing these four um, and the ones on castles, and then I guess the two on the giants. That's probably how I'll do it. But we're back to my turn. And first I can capture villages, and I need to capture 10 of them to win the game. I've got four currently I can capture, so let's discard a castle. One tile is the most you can discard to capture four. So all of these are gone, which will make these spaces now eligible for my own villages at the end of the turn. Now, giants only have a plus two combat bonus, so these spaces are going to be easier to uh, attack than the castles. But this is hill terrain, so I'll have to spend three movement for each unit that goes up there, which means uh, the leader is so important here. Do I just go in with my leader and my siege engine? Is that enough? Well, either way, let's just save my castle in case the battle goes terribly and first get three movement points from one of the cavalry units. And let's see, we can do like one, uh, two, have the leader bring the sword with them. Oh gosh, what do I do with my third? If I move this sword guy, it's okay. But then my uh, ships will only allow me to build a village here because I won't have the chain anymore. Whereas with this guy here, I can build a village like there and there. Although you know what, what the hey, let's build a skirmisher just for uh, area control purposes. Let's say we did that before playing the uh, horse tile. So this will be my third movement point. I'll ferry him over here. So now uh, I'll be able to build villages more consistently. And now let's see. So to get all three of these guys in here, even with the leader bringing one of them, I would need six movement. And then that would give me four attack versus the giants two. And we'd both be drawing four tiles. That sounds reasonable. Um, okay. So yeah, okay. Let's do uh, three, six move. And again, three gets the leader in, bring in the siege engine with him. The other three gets the sword in just to hedge my bets. And let's go and resolve the combat here. They've got two combat strength. I've got one, two, three, four. So a two point advantage again. And I've got my four castle waiting if I need it, though I would love to finally, yeah, draw well and not have to use it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, no way they can win with my two point bonus, but let's see what they get. Um, not enough. It wasn't a bad draw. So they get five, nine, 12, plus two for the giant 14. And I get 5, 10, 14 already, and then plus 4 more for my units, so I crush them. All right, so that destroys the giant. Again, the village is not gone yet. I'll destroy it uh, on a future turn. Now, sadly, they still have one giant left, so they're still drawing four tiles. But once that guy goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's on. I've got two tiles left. I could do some other stuff, but I want to save the leader because I only have one uh, in my entire bag left. I want to save him to recruit next turn, and I want to build some villages, so I guess I'll discard the castle to do that. So I have four pips worth of villages to build. It's one, again, for plains, uh, one for forests, two for hills, and plains can technically hold two villages each. Uh, that's only for scoring in the competitive game, though. And I don't need to build a village here because I can use my chain of ships and units to build there. And then other villages can chain off of this. So I can immediately build with my other three pips off of this village. So let's do that and go there and chain into here. And that's it. I'm going to waste my fourth pip because I don't really care about going west to these forests. And I can't go into any of these spaces that still have enemy uh, pieces, even just villages like that. But it certainly gives me the ability to recruit uh, closer to where I need units potentially. And all right, uh, I draw back up to seven and I kept my leader. So you don't uh, get rid of tiles that you had at the end of the turn. So I'll be able to summon him next turn in one of those villages if I think that's the right thing to do. Also, I'm going to get this sword out again. Uh, the shield doesn't help. That's only defense. The boats aren't going to help. The skirmish doesn't really help. So, yeah, that might be all I do. I mean, I guess the skirmisher could be <laughs> a sacrificial victim if I ever lose a fight. But that's about all they're good for. Meanwhile, the hill folk in the next village... Build a cavalry. I do not care. All right, now we go into my turn again. I think I could destroy villages, and I'm on a single enemy village where the giant used to be. I guess even though it's a little bit of a waste, I'll discard the skirmisher to get rid of it, because otherwise I would have had to leave one of my units on this space, and I want to go kill the giant, so I don't think it makes sense to uh, hang back. 
That's my fifth enemy village destroyed out of ten, by the way, although I still have to get four castles and a citadel. Next, I want to kill giant number two. So again, I'll need uh, six movement points to get here. What the hey, I've got a uh, five here that I can hang on to. Let's go ahead and spend eight movement points from two ships. Six of them to move in for the attack. And two to get my little uh, left behind sword guy a bit more into the battle where he can help out. Since he is still a plus one, which will help with these uh, tougher castles and such. Anyhow, let's go ahead and do this battle before we do anything else. So uh, once again, we are up by two. And this is hopefully the last time they get to draw four tiles. Oh, this is not looking good. I think my five is coming in. Yeah, let's uh, get rid of one of these twos. Well, both twos, actually. And use my five tile. And they... Okay, no fives yet. Oh, this is actually... Ah! Okay, once again, we love this 3-4-5 uh, motion, don't we? I have a plus two bonus, even though we had the exact same tiles. So I am victorious. So that is their second giant dead, and no more four tiles for them. Right, what else do I want to do this turn? Um... I'm actually not in a hurry to do much else. Um, I think I can get more aggressive next turn. And really, the timer is more me going through my bag too quickly, since uh, once I go through uh, three times, I lose, than uh, the enemy adding just one unit to their villages. So I'm going to stop there, and I won't build any more villages, because uh, I don't really need them. Ooh, awesome. So these are some of the things I really want to get out. Don't care about the defenders, but another siege engine for plus two attack, the other leader, and maybe that last sword. Yes, please, for all of that. I mean, well, on their turn, ah, they get another Reaver in a useless village. I would have much rather that uh, been one of the ones that goes on the castles because it doesn't help them defend any better. And now at the start of my turn, once again, I think I want to destroy this village. Although, huh, it's a bit of a waste. Eh, well, it's okay. I'll discard a shield to get three pips more than I need. And there goes village number six. Which means if I just kill the four villages on the castles I'll be attacking, I will have already fulfilled my victory condition. I don't necessarily need to mess with any of these other ones. Now, before I do anything else, I want to think about my attack strategy. So let's say I go left to right. Let me show you what'll happen. So I go here, I kill the castle, the reaver retreats to there, and because the castle dies, they get a free unit here. So now suddenly I've got three guys here. Then I go here and kill this castle. Both people here retreat to the citadel, and because I killed a castle, they get a free unit on the citadel. And by the way, citadels give plus five attack, not plus three. And this is on a darn hill, which means it's like impossible to climb up. Then if I kill this castle, it's not too bad, but it's going to send a unit to the citadel. Then if I kill this castle, it also send a unit to the citadel, which kind of makes me think maybe I want to kill the citadel first while it's kind of at its weakest. But the problem with that is if you kill the citadel early, they add three units to the three closest castles. So that'd be this one, this one, and this one. The most annoying of those being this one, which is also on a hill, but I only have one unit then. This will have two, that'll have one. Then if I kind of split the difference and attack here... Uh, the one unit here will go there and they'll spawn an extra unit here. So this will become very tough, but it's also easy to reach. See, I'm actually thinking maybe I do Citadel, Forest, go here. The guys who retreat won't be able to get to the hills place, then the hill place, and then finish off the forest. Maybe that's the order I go for. So maybe this turn I just focus on summoning. So the leader is going to take two. Uh, let's get rid of these two inexpensive shields. And then the siege engine will take one. And I guess I won't get out my sword yet. All right, let's put them uh, here, I guess. And then I think I'll stop there and start bringing people down to attack next turn. And once again, I don't care about building villages. So let's see, I got a castle, some sword guys, a shield guy I don't want, an archer I don't want. Oh man, more swords. I'm not going to build all of them because there are way too many to move on to all these places. But uh, they have four values, so that's good. All right, and hill folk. Oh, they're actually going to be in my way, potentially. But hey, it's just a sword unit, and I'm much happier it's here than on a castle since that's plus one to all battles. All right, so let's uh, move in. So let's see, for one movement, I can get them in. Two movement, and then three movement with the leader and my siege engines. So that'll be this shield guy. And then not sure we need to resolve this battle. We're at two, four, five, six, seven versus one, so a six point advantage. And we're drawing four tokens. So, I mean, let's see. We'll just see if ours are the worst tokens ever. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, <laughs> with a six-point advantage, that's a 10, 13, 16. The best possible value they can get is 14, so they are losing. All right, so that sword is gone. Now, do I want to try to kill the Citadel with just this force? Two, four, five, six, seven. That would be a two-point advantage, and again, I'm drawing more tiles than they are. I think I can make that work. Can I get up there, though? <laughs> so let's see. With two leaders, that'd be six movement to get four of the guys up. Um, I guess I could just sit with plus one instead of plus two in the combat and not spend the extra three to get the sword guy up. Yeah, I kind of like that. So let's do the skirmisher. That's two, and then maybe four more from the ship. 
So that's six. We'll get leader, siege engine, leader, siege engine. We only have a one point advantage, but we get to draw four tiles. They only draw three. And we can sub in one of our four tiles that's left if our values suck. I feel pretty good about that. Okay, that's a great start. Oh, that's a great start too. Not so good. Uh, all right, I really don't want to lose this. Even though it's probably kind of overkill, I'm going to discard this castle to get a four. All right, so here we go. I guess they could tie me if they went five, five, four, since I'm one above them, but hopefully that won't happen. Yeah, okay, they already look. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> I wasted so much. All right, so their citadel is destroyed, but that means they're getting three units, um, and it's in reading order closest. So it'll be here, then here, and then here. So here they get, oh, awesome, a siege engine. That's, again, no bonus in defense, only in offense. On the hills, I'll give them something great. Oh, yes, a reaver. No bonus to defense. And, oh, my gosh. Uh, skirmishers only get bonuses in forest, so they would have been great here. So this is amazing. They have so many units, and literally none of them are helping them fight. Except, again, making it tougher for me to have the larger force to get four tile draws. See, so yeah, I think we're going to clean up pretty easily here. This is better luck than I've had in this scenario in the past. All right, so again, my next plan was the forest. And that only has three defense, so I could probably get away again with just uh, the leaders. And forest has two movements. That'd only be four to get in there. So, yeah, let's use my swords. That's, uh, there we go, two and four. And only their castle is helping them here, so that's three. And I've got uh, six, so three-point advantage and one more tile. Doesn't seem like it'll be close, but, oh my gosh, we can always draw like that. I think I'm still okay. I'm not going to use an extra tile. Let's just see what they draw. So we're going to have a three-point advantage. That five equals my five. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. 13. And I'm 9, 11, 14 with a three-point advantage. Whew. They made that closer than I wanted. All right. Only the castle is destroyed. The siege engine retreats. And we'll go towards the closest castle, lower value. So it's really shoring up this place. And that same castle also gets another really... Wow. <laughs> Where are their leaders? Where are their swordsmen? Where are their shields? Not here is the answer. Gosh. And the awesome thing is, again, when I go here and kill these guys, they're going to retreat, but they can only retreat in one space. So they won't shore up the defenses of this castle here. Can I do that this turn? I've got four guys. Although, hmm, getting enough in here to outnumber them will be tough. Do I need to? Do I need to outnumber them? I don't think I do. I mean, four movement points will get one, uh, and that, two, and that. Oh, and then I can bring this guy in, three? And what the, hey, bring up my skirmisher, four? All right, this seems good. And this brings us to an even number of tiles. We both have five. And in a tie, we each draw three battle tiles. Fine with that. They only have three from their castle. I have, I think, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the sword, yeah. Oh, and sorry, I did have to spend the four to actually make that move. All right, so we both draw three, but I have a big advantage, and that was a good draw. Oh, they got a... No, that's not... Yeah, okay, they easily lose. So they only lose their castle. And these guys all retreat. Uh, they want to go to an adjacent castle, but they can't. They also can't go where my units are. They could go where I came from, but no, they're going to pick this place since it has um, a lower value earlier in reading order, which I guess kind of uh, isolates my swordman up here a little bit, but I don't think I need him. But they do get another unit on the closest castle. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's another battering ram. Somewhere in here hiding, they have a sixth castle. And a double castle gives six defense. That is a tough nut to crack. But they haven't gotten it yet. All right, so this place is still just three defense. The hill is still going to be super annoying to uh, climb up. Now, you know what? I do have to destroy villages, though. I forgot about that. So I'm going to spend my last sword. I'm about to reshuffle, so it kind of is good to get more things back in my bag. To get four movement points. All right, let's go leader and siege engine. Oh, and then I guess uh, leader and siege engine again for the other four. Remember, it's two to move into forest. That gives me one, two, three easy village destructions next turn if I uh, discard a tile be worth at least three. And then we can work on destroying our last two castles. So I only have one tile left in my bag, which means I'm triggering my first reshuffle. So, yeah. <laughs> Again, these are very much in early development. Clearly, they're probably going to make this one tougher because I have way too much time to play it. And then all of my tiles go back in my bag. In a way, it's good that I didn't build a billion more units because then I just go through my bag faster. All right, so let's draw. Yeah, I like these big values. I don't really care about summoning anybody. I don't think I need any more swords. I just need those numbers. All right, and there's someone in the cavalry. Uh, first unoccupied village <laughs> all the way over there. Bye. All right, now comes around to me. I got to kill three villages. Or I should say I want to, so let's get rid of one of these cavalry for the three points. 
And that gets me, okay, to nine villages. I just need one more plus killing the two castles. Which I bet besides the village I can make happen this turn. Uh, let's see, so that'll be six movement to get my little wrecking crew here into there. And I would outnumber them, although they'll retreat over there and it'll make it a little bit tougher. But that's already a forest, so I'm not super worried. All right, so six movement. I actually don't have that. <laughs> we'll do seven movement then. All right, so six for this with the leaders bringing the siege engines. And then for my seventh, I guess I'll move this sword down here. And then he can kind of come around <laughs> to help out. Now I outnumber them four to three, so I'll draw four tiles. They'll only draw three, and only the castle is helping, so I've got six, they've got three. Once again, shouldn't be too tough, but let's see. Huh, it's not a great draw, but with the plus three, I'm sure I'm fine. Um, yep. I've got one more than them already here, and then my units are also stronger, so bye-bye. So that kills their second to last castle, but their uh, siege engine and their reavers retreat to that one. And they also spawn, oh, a sword! Hey, something that actually helps. So that is uh, four combat power. And if I go in, I'll tie them in units. So yeah, let's try to bring a sword schmo over here. Uh, let's see, how much movement that would be total? Uh, two, four to get these four in there with the leaders. And then five, six, seven, eight for the sword. Easy peasy, easy peasy. There we go. Four, eight. All right, final battle of the game, final turn of the game, except I do have to wait until the beginning of the next turn to actually destroy my 10th village. I've got more units than them, so I'm drawing four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they've got one, two, three, four. So I've got a three-point advantage and a reasonable draw. But what the hey, we've got it. Let's uh, use one of our five tiles here to make it an amazing, unbeatable value. And then what have they got? Four, two, wah, wah, three, defeated... All right, so that's the last castle. Um, I'm not sure. I think these guys would all go up here. And all that remains is to mop things up by uh, the beginning of next turn, spending at least one pip to destroy that village. So there we go. That was a scenario in Bloodstones, at least currently with how the solo mode is playing. And again, this is a, an attacking scenario where the enemy is pretty passive. But to show you a very different one just for a second, uh, this is the third scenario currently for the Horse Lords. And in this one, you are defending against a two-pronged attack from uh, the dragons to the south and the uh, hill folk from the north. And they each get a turn. They draw a random tile from their bag, and that will either uh, move one of their armies forward or it will spawn more people back. So they basically keep on coming, and you have to defend uh, most of your villages. If you lose too many villages, or of course, if they take your citadel, you lose immediately. So you can't just kind of turtle up. You have to like move out and address the different forces as they come. So yeah, that's, that's a little look at how the solo might be. But let me go ahead and give some of my impressions of the game so far. So first of all, in terms of the core mechanics, I really like this tile system, the uh, tough choices of who to recruit and which tiles to use for movement and which tiles to use for village building, which tiles to use for village destruction. I think it's great. I think it's a really interesting resource puzzle. And although you haven't gotten it so much in the solo scenarios that I've played so far, I do like in competitive how kind of the whole village minigame works, how you're trying to lay down as many as you can to get victory points and destroy the enemy ones, which also get you victory points, but, you know, not extend yourself too much or not use so many tiles to build villages that you don't have enough left to actually fight. Um, I think that's really cool. See, I'm very excited about the competitive mode. I think it seems like a really cool uh, tactical skirmish game with that whole tile system layered onto it. Now, as for the solo, it's it's tough to say so far. Uh, the things I like is that each scenario is very different. In the first scenario, you're hunting dragons who can easily retreat. So you basically have to, like, surround them with your units. But the enemy armies are coming in, so you have to, like, fight them off so you can get the kill on the dragon. The second scenario, as you saw, was a kind of attack optimization one. The third scenario is a cool survival defense one. So I like where uh, Steve and the solo designer is going, trying to have these be very different and giving, like, each faction time to shine. I think that's cool. What I'm not so sure about is the difficulty. Uh, right now, everything is a little bit easier, except uh, this scenario is a bit hard, but like uh, the first and second one, I think are pretty straightforward and pretty simple. And uh, for the first and second one right now, I do feel like sometimes things are a bit too uh, maybe solvable. Uh, you saw that I kind of followed a track for the second scenario, and that's similar to the same track I've followed when I've played it before, because uh, going up the middle just hasn't seemed as efficient or smart. So yes, there are some random elements, but I'm hoping they keep on adding more of those in. I also hope that they add 
add uh, a way to like make scenarios more difficult. That would be awesome to fine tune it to your skill level and give them more replay. Although I think they're doing uh, 12 or 16 solo scenarios. So even if they are a bit of a puzzle and like once you've played it once, you've kind of solved it, that's still really good value. Now, the only thing I kind of miss with a solo is that so far none of them use the victory point track. And I think kind of like the building of your own villages and taking out of enemy villages is such a core part of the tactics and play and resource management of the competitive game that, you know, I hope they at least have some scenarios that do use those core mechanics and don't kind of uh, just ignore them entirely. Not every scenario. I like the scenarios I've played so far, but I do hope they do that. So yeah, I, th I think this is pretty cool so far. You know, I, I can't say yet whether I would recommend the game just for solo play because it's really hard to say from the build I'm playing right now, but it certainly seems like it'll be an amazing value add if you think you might also play Bloodstones competitively, and I think Bloodstones competitive seems really neat. So uh, hopefully that was helpful for all of you who might have been on the fence or just kind of wondering what solo might look like. And uh, hey, let me know if I got major rules wrong in Bloodstones. Maybe that's why it was uh, easier for me to win that second scenario. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.